Imagine yourself floating in absolute nothingness, not darkness, not emptiness, pure non-existence. There's no up or down, no forward or backward. In fact, there's no where at all because space itself doesn't exist yet. How can you visit a place where the very concept of location is meaningless? What we'll discover in the next few minutes will challenge not just physics, but your entire understanding of reality. You're about to learn why before the Big Bang might be a place where you're simultaneously everywhere and nowhere at once. Every particle in your body, every star in the sky, every moment in history, all of it created in that singular, incomprehensible moment we call the Big Bang. Understanding our beginning means understanding why anything exists at all. It's the ultimate origin story, not just of stars and planets, but of reality itself. If we could somehow witness creation, we might reveal not just how the universe began, but why it began. Is there purpose coded into the fabric of reality, or is existence itself an accident? The stakes couldn't be higher. This is about the fundamental nature of everything. Let's establish what we know. According to our best physics, roughly 13.8 billion years ago, all matter, energy, space, and time erupted from a single point of infinite density and temperature. But the Big Bang wasn't an explosion in pre-existing space. It was the birth of space itself, expanding outward not into anything, but creating the very concept of where as it grew. Our most precise measurements can only take us back to what scientists call the Planck time, which is an unimaginably brief 10 to the power of negative 43 seconds after the beginning, when the entire observable universe was smaller than an atom. Before this point, our equations break down completely. Standard physics shatters as we approach time zero. Space and time themselves dissolve into quantum uncertainty. This creates our first major paradox. If time doesn't exist yet, how could we possibly measure one minute before? When we say before the Big Bang, we're already using language that presupposes time. But time itself might be just another product of the Big Bang, not something that existed prior to it. It's like asking what's north of the North Pole. The question itself contains a fundamental misconception. And yet, various theories in modern physics hint at possibilities beyond our conventional understanding of time. Perhaps our universe is just one bubble in a vast multiverse, or maybe time itself is circular rather than linear. As you step through the cosmic boundary, conventional reality dissolves around you. But what replaces it? There's no darkness because there's no light, no silence because there's no sound, just pure potential, an indescribable state of being that doesn't yet have properties we can name. Your senses search desperately for input, but find nothing recognizable. Gravity doesn't pull you because there's no down. In fact, the very concepts of position and direction have no meaning yet. Cause and effect themselves become questionable when time runs in strange loops or possibly doesn't exist at all. Your very presence creates a contradiction. Consciousness observing a reality that can't yet support consciousness. The laws of physics as we know them are products of our universe, not prerequisites for it. In this pre-cosmic realm, those laws haven't been established yet. Instead of the four fundamental forces we know, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces, there might be a single unified force or something entirely beyond our mathematical description. At this boundary, space might become granular, digital, breaking into foam-like quantum bits that pop in and out of existence. Quantum gravity theory suggests that at the smallest scales, Space is in smooth but discrete, composed of minimum units like pixels on a screen. Perhaps you're witnessing not just our universe being born, but all possible universes, an infinite array of bubbles, each with its own physical laws, each sprouting from this primordial quantum soup. Your survival in such a realm is impossible by conventional standards. Your atoms would have no space to exist in. Your neural signals would have no time to travel in. The very molecules that make up your cells require specific physical constants to maintain their bonds. Constants that haven't been determined yet. And yet some theories suggest consciousness itself might transcend space-time, making you the only possible observer of this impossible state. Quantum physics already tells us that observation affects reality at the most fundamental level. 
Perhaps consciousness isn't just an emergent property of complexity, but something woven into the fabric of existence itself. If so, your presence at the beginning wouldn't just be witnessing creation, it might be participating in it. This leads us to our first major revelation. What if there was no before? What if time itself is circular and the end of our universe creates its beginning? Recent models in loop quantum cosmology suggest the Big Bang might be a boundary between expansion and contraction. Not a beginning, but a transition, like the surface of a sphere where you can travel continuously without ever reaching an edge. In such a model, asking what came before the Big Bang would be like asking what's south of the South Pole. The question assumes a linearity that may not exist at the deepest level of reality. The miracle, then, isn't just that something came from nothing. It's that nothing and everything might be the same thing viewed differently, like two sides of the same coin. Just as you can't stand outside the universe, you can't stand outside existence. You are the universe experiencing itself, a collection of atoms contemplating the origins of atoms. This perspective shift reveals something profound about our place in the cosmos. The universe isn't just something that happened 13.8 billion years ago. It's happening now continuously in every corner of space. Every atom in your body was forged in the hearts of dying stars, which themselves contained elements created during the first moments after the Big Bang. You're not just made of stardust, you're made of universe dust. The hydrogen in your cells dates back to those earliest moments of creation. In a very real sense, you are the Big Bang, still unfolding, not metaphorically, but literally, a temporary configuration of energy and matter set in motion at the beginning of time. As quantum fluctuations intensify around you in this pre-universe state, you sense the spark about to ignite all of creation. The temperature, though temperature isn't quite the right concept yet, begins to rise toward the incomprehensible heat of the Big Bang itself. Probabilities collapse, potentialities crystallize, and the quantum foam begins to stabilize into what will become the fundamental forces and particles of our reality. But this raises an urgent question. Could your presence alter the fabric of reality as it forms? Could you accidentally prevent your own existence? Quantum mechanics teaches us that observation affects outcomes, collapsing probability waves into definite states. If consciousness can influence quantum events in laboratory experiments, what might it do to the quantum genesis of the universe itself? This is the cosmic observer effect writ large. Reality might require consciousness to fully exist, but consciousness requires reality to emerge. It's a chicken and egg paradox on a universal scale. Some theories suggest our universe is fine-tuned for life precisely because consciousness plays a role in its creation, not through divine intervention, but through quantum entanglement across space and time. The philosophical implications are staggering. You wouldn't just be witnessing the beginning, but participating in a causal loop where consciousness helps shape the conditions for its own eventual emergence. If you could witness creation but risk changing it, would that responsibility be too great? Would you be an observer or a creator or somehow both? As these possibilities swirl around you, the moment of creation approaches. A single point of infinite density begins to expand, not into space, but creating space as it expands. The unified force begins to separate into the four fundamental forces we know. Physics itself is being born around you, dimensions unfurling, constants settling into their precise values the symmetry of the early universe breaking to allow complexity to emerge. It's like watching a symphony compose itself while simultaneously inventing music. The experience transcends sensory perception. You're not just seeing, hearing, or feeling the birth of the universe. You're experiencing it at a level beyond ordinary consciousness. You're not just witnessing the birth of stars and galaxies, but the birth of possibility itself. The initial expansion isn't just creating the backdrop for future events. It's creating the very notion of future and events. In an instant that transcends time itself, everything changes. From a state of perfect symmetry and infinite potential, reality fractures into distinct forces and fields. The unified force splits into gravity, electromagnetism, and the nuclear forces, 
The perfect homogeneity of the primordial universe gives way to tiny quantum fluctuations that will eventually grow into galaxies. In the first infinitesimal fraction of a second, the universe expands faster than light through a process called inflation, stretching quantum fluctuations into the seeds of cosmic structure. Temperature, density, and energy levels beyond human comprehension drive the formation of the first subatomic particles. Quarks and gluons swirl in a plasma trillions of degrees hot. As you witness this transformation, you realize you're not observing it from outside. You are part of this process, inseparable from the unfolding creation. As the inflationary period ends, the universe continues to expand and cool. The first protons and neutrons form, then the first atomic nuclei, primarily hydrogen with traces of helium and lithium. For hundreds of thousands of years, the universe remains an opaque fog of charged particles and radiation, until finally cooling enough for electrons to bind with nuclei, forming the first neutral atoms. Light, previously trapped in constant scattering, suddenly streams freely across space. This is the cosmic microwave background radiation we still detect today, the afterglow of creation itself. The universe becomes transparent. Gravity slowly pulls matter together, forming the first stars, then galaxies, then clusters of galaxies. Structure emerging from the primordial chaos, complexity from simplicity, order from randomness. As you return to the now, you carry an impossible memory, the memory of existence's birth. Everything you see now appears different. Temporary configurations of energy set in motion at the beginning of time. That coffee cup on your desk isn't just a coffee cup. It's a collection of particles whose potential has existed since the Big Bang, temporarily assembled into a form we call a cup. The person sitting across from you isn't separate from you at the most fundamental level. You both emerge from the same cosmic genesis, your atoms possibly neighbors in the primordial plasma. If everything, time, space, matter, emerge from a single point, then everything remains fundamentally connected. Your brief existence isn't separate from the universe. It's the universe experiencing itself in human form. What we've discovered isn't just how the universe began, but how reality itself might be a process rather than a thing. The universe isn't a place, it's an event still unfolding. And we are not observers of this cosmic drama, but participants in it. The boundary between you and everything else is far more permeable than our everyday experience suggests. Does understanding our cosmic origins change how you view your place in the universe? Does it transform the meaning of your daily struggles and triumphs? Everything you know, every person, every star, every moment, emerges from this single cosmic event. You are its witness, its product, and perhaps in some sense its purpose. The questions we ask about the universe are the universe asking questions about itself. Our consciousness is the cosmos becoming self-aware. And while the boundary of scientific knowledge keeps advancing, some mysteries remain. Perhaps they always will. But that uncertainty doesn't diminish the wonder. It amplifies it. We stand at the frontier, not just of knowledge, but of being itself. And whatever cosmic mysteries remain to be solved, we face them not as separate observers, but as the universe's way of knowing itself.